artists, welcome to your Sea Creatures Paint and Cross. In front of you, you should have your blank canvas, uh, long ways like so, your large brush and your small brush, a cup of water, black paint, white paint, and your teal color, which is that really pretty blue and green mix. Um, if you do not have all those materials, you are welcome to push pause on the video and then join us whenever you are ready. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started. Um, Go ahead and grab your two brushes and swirl them in your cup of water and get them nice and clean. So we're gonna wash our brushes and then gently tap them onto your paper towel so they're not too wet. Perfect. Once you are done with that, you are gonna grab your larger brush and you're gonna jump in to your teal paint and we're gonna pretty much break up our canvas into kind of thirds, one, two, and three. So the top third, so more than halfway up, about this high up, you are gonna use your big brush and your teal paint. So not halfway, a little bit higher up. You're gonna make a line with your big brush and your teal paint going from side to side. And you want a lot of space down here because you are going to build your sea creature um, and there's going to be some nice long um, uh, legs on your sea creature. And your line does not have to be perfect. Just be sure you have a nice, long, smooth line from one side to the next. And then don't forget about the left side and the right side where it kind of curves over your canvas. And again, your line does not have to be perfect. Later on, we'll go in there and kind of Clean it up just a little bit. Perfect. Once you are done with that, you are going to uh, dip your brush in the teal again. And you're going to add a dot of black. So just a dot of black on there. And the top part up here, kind of like a ruler's width, you are going to sweep, which means you're going to flick your big brush back and forth with some black and some teal. So I'm going to put my brush back in the teal and a dot of black and stay up here at the ruler's width. And I'm just kind of flicking my big brush back and forth. Maybe a little bit more black. it in it so I don't want to cover up all those areas and you definitely see that black and that teal working together so we'll go back and forth if you want um, to help the two work together a little bit better you can dip your brush in the water tap it on your paper towel about five or six times and then go over it that'll always help your paint move a little bit easier and blend uh, the teal and the black together a little bit easier. So side to side, a little bit more black. So I definitely want a nice dark sky. I am gonna kind of fold over my colors to the left that ruler's width, to the right that ruler's width, and to the top of my canvas. So I'll, I'll use that same brush. I'll kind of curve it over to the left, a little bit of teal and black on my brush, maybe not too much, and I'll make sure I've got all that space that looks like the ruler's width on the side, and then the top of my canvas I can also paint with teal and black. If you feel like you went too far down, not a problem at all. Just be sure you have the white canvas that's peeking through that ruler's width covered. Like so. And before it dries, you are going to move on. So before it dries, I'm just going to go back to more teal. And I'm going to work more on this middle area. So I didn't even wash my brush but I went back to more teal 
I make a line right here with my teal just so we know where we're at with that. And I'm going to paint it with more teal on my brush. There might still be a little bit of black on your brush, not a problem. But you just want to go back to teal at this point. And that ruler's width right there. You're going to flip back and forth with your big brush. And I'm going to even come up and over my teal and black mix just a little bit so it doesn't look so stripy. I have that blending point where the two work together. Nice long sweep side to side. Make sure it looks nice and smooth. Rulers with and just come up just a little bit flicking on top of the next space. And then again you can fold over your colors that ruler's width and come up a little bit. And come up. And if you are not done with this part, you're welcome to push pause on your video. You do want to make sure that both colors are wet, so be sure you're not giving it too much time to dry. But you have your teal and black, and then you have more of the teal working on its own. And it comes up into the black and teal part a little bit. Perfect. And then before those two sections dry, you don't want to clean your brush. And you want to add a little bit of white to your brush in this section down here. And even over your line, you want to have a little bit of white and teal on your brush at the same time. So you can go back and forth from the two. And it is okay if you had a little bit of black on your brush. If you feel like you had too much black on your brush, you can um, let it dry for just a little bit and then go back over it with the white to white it out. This area is the teal and the white. You carry those colors, or you carry the teal and white over to the sides as well. And then you wanna come up a little bit with the teal and white as well. So teal and white, carry it off to the sides, and then come up a little bit over the teal kind of on its own. And I did break up that line that I made earlier. I don't want to see that perfect line. Like so. I am going to go back for a little bit more white and brighten it up just a little bit up here. So I do want to get a little bit more white up here. So I just went back for more white and brighten it up just a little bit. More on the left side, but you can add a little bit on the white as well. There is going to be a moon here to the top right. So that's why I'm kind of adding a little bit of white more down here. And all I did, is, um, all I did was go back and add white to my brush. I haven't even washed it yet. I just kind of swept some white in from the left. If it's not really doing a good job of becoming a nice bright white, let it dry for a couple minutes and then, uh, or excuse me, let it dry for like a minute and then come back and sweep some white over it. So it doesn't blend in as much. It kind of sits on top of your teal a little bit better. There we go. Great job. All right. Um, and then you don't even have to wash your brush for the next step, but I do want you to use your napkin and get off most of the color so you don't have to worry about washing. You can just use your brush and wipe it off on your paper towel. We are gonna kind of be using that same idea for the dark to medium and to light, but now it's gonna be more of a U shape from dark to medium to light rather than just going side to side. So we're gonna Again, wipe off a big brush, grab some teal, and a dot of black. And I'll show you how that first U shape is going to look like. So I'm going to come up. And then come up. And I'll paint all that space underneath it. You're going to come up all the way to either side. And all the space down here is going to be your teal and your black. 
and nice long brush strokes all the way from one side to the other. And be sure you're staying underneath that line. Peel. I'm going from one side to the other. And I am going to use some water on my brush. Tap it on my tape, paper towel five or six times and go over the teal and black. That looks like it's helping it move so nicely. And you want to stop at that line that you made as best as you can. And that water will help a lot on your brush. And from one side to the other, so you don't see the stop and go as much with your brush. too much higher than that but I do want to go from one side to the next to get it nice and smooth so I can kind of work on these lower parts where it's gonna be a little bit darker because a little bit less light is gonna be or less light's gonna be hitting it because the moon is further away so I went in there and added my black so dark to light This new shape down here, from one side to the next, being uh, sure that it's at the teal and blue that are working together, and then I can go ahead and just kind of paint off to, to the side too. Ooh, I forgot to paint my sides, teal and white twin away. Alright, so then all of this. all the side it's kind of painted it's kind of working in a side to side motion with my brush stopping at that line and then same with the other side I'm just gonna be gonna go in there with a little bit more teal and white sorry about that I stopped with my teal and white to mix there it goes all right and then underneath it teal and black on my brush, working my way all the way down. And then in just a moment, I'll be painting the very bottom of my canvas with teal and black. So, and before the the top part dries, uh, so after I'm done with the left side, the right side, and the bottom with my teal and black, before it dries, I am gonna go in there um, with just uh, teal on my brush. So I'm not gonna dip back in the black, but I'm not gonna uh, 
I wash and dry my brush. I just dipped my big brush in my teal paint. I'm going to come up and over a little bit higher. So let's say about this far over. And again, I'm going to make that U shape. This is mostly just teal on my brush. I might have some leftover black, but I didn't wash my brush. I'm just going to go in there. And then I'll go back to my teal, and I'll paint all this space underneath it, going from one side to the next. I'm trying to cover up those bumps. I don't want it to be too bumpy. And I am going to overlap over that black and teal just a little bit, too. Side and legs and overlap. Ooh, get some of that black off my brush if I accidentally grab some. Go back to more teal. And again, water, tap it on your paper towel about five or six times, and then going over your teal area will help a lot. So from one side to the next, really smooth it out. Be sure to overlap over your black and teal. So we have one more little area we're going to work on in just a moment. And it's the same idea as up here. We're going to do teal and white and overlap over our teal just a little bit. So I'm going to go over my black just a little bit from one side to the next. Kind of all the way through the line. And then I'm not going to clean my brush. I'm just going to dip into the white. And I'm going to, I'm just going to start down here. I'm going to overlap over my teal area. And then work my way up in that U shape as I have been doing all this time. So it's almost like my U is getting smaller and smaller. If you feel like you have too much teal or black on your brush, you can always just wipe it off on the paper towel. It does look like my new shape is getting smaller and smaller. I'm going all the way up to that line. Again, you do want to overlap over your teal just a little bit. And the U does get a little bit smaller and smaller and a, truly a little bit more flat as you get closer to this line. I'm going to give this a moment to dry, but I'll go back in there and make this area a little bit more brighter with more white, but I'll give it some time to dry. I do still have a little bit of white and teal on my brush, so if I wanted to come down just a little bit and sweep, kind of in that same um, kind of motion underneath this area, I'm going to sweep. And I am overlapping a little bit, or I am overlapping over the teal kind of on its own. I just want to kind of make it work together a little bit more smoothly. So it's the teal and the white on my brush, and on the left here, I'm following the same motion on the um on the lightest area, and I'm maybe coming down a little bit further and adding a little bit of teal and white with just a sweep again down here. If it looks kind of rough, you can always get water on your brush, tap on the paper towel, and go over those two sections. But I just kind of broke up this section a little bit with a long sweep and in, and then coming this way with a long sweep and in. 
to the left. I'm gonna wipe off my brush. And then I'll go in here. Be a little bit less white. Add a little bit more white kind of on its own. As I get closer up, I want it to be a little bit brighter. So I kind of went back in this area and added a little bit more white, like so. Perfect. Um, if you want, this is totally a suggestion, if you still see a lot of canvas poking through, you are welcome to go back and give things a second coat. If you feel like they're gonna look a little bit cleaner the second time around, uh, just be aware of a wet color touches another wet color, um, they are gonna blend or like mix together. Um, but giving things a second coat can give it a little bit better, better of a coverage so you don't see the canvas as much. Uh, so for instance, if I wanted to go in here where it's mostly teal and wash and dry my big brush, I'm just gonna sweep some teal in there. Leave in a little bit of water, tap, tap, tap go in there and just kind of give that another coat but be sure you're giving things some time to dry mine might have still been too wet so I can kind of go in there in a couple minutes and give it another coat and even um let's see okay. and even let's see down here where it's black and teal I can go back and I black and teal on my brush, tap it on my paper towel, and go over this section one more time. But be sure to give things a couple minutes to dry before you go in there with that second coat. So once you're done with all those blending areas where the colors are all working together, then go on there with another coat. But if they're shiny, it means it's still wet. You might need to give it some extra drying time, like I should have given this more drying time before I laid a coat on top. Uh, but that is absolutely artist's choice. Uh, the next thing we are going to do is we are going to build our line right here with white and then our moon up here to the right. Um, again, be sure that your background is nice and dry. If you want to let it sit for about five minutes uh, before you start building the line and the moon, you can. Um, but I am going to uh, let my canvas sit for a couple minutes and I will be back to show you uh, the kind of the second half of our painting class. All right, we're back for the second half of our painting class. Be sure you've given your background about five to ten minutes to dry. I do still have some wet spots here, uh, but I'm going to work on this white uh, kind of wave and the moon while that dries a little bit more. But I would definitely recommend five to ten minutes of drying time uh, before you move on to this next step. All right, so I'm just going to double check, make sure my brushes are nicely washed and dried. My paper towel. Then I'm going to go in there with my small brush and my white paint and I'm going to go over that line that I made before. Nice long brush stroke from one side to the other with my small brush and my white paint. So I'm just going to clean up where the two meet, where the water meets the sky. And it's a pretty thin line of white. We're going to make it a second coat. But it's a good way to also clean up where those two met so you don't see those brush strokes. I'm going to come in from the other direction so I can kind of have more of a solid white line on this side. And drag that brush so it's nice and smooth and not choppy. If you feel like... Um, your white is not bright enough, if you feel like it's not showing up too well. It might be that the paint in the background is a little bit too wet and it's blending in with it. And I do curve my canvas to where I'm painting on the left side and on the right side where the two meet, where water meets sky. Perfect. Like so. Make sure it looks good in there. 
if, again if you feel like it's not bright enough let your paint dry and then go back over it with a nice long smooth um, line once you're done with that you are going to work on your moon you'll keep the same uh, small brush if you got some teal on it you can wash and dry it but i just have white on my small brush and i'm going to make a nice big moon on this top right corner i definitely don't want to pass the halfway mark with my moon i want to kind of keep it over here to the right corner make a circle shape so what i'm going to do with my small brush is I'm just gonna make the outline of my circle first. So I'm gonna go in there. Again, I don't wanna pass that halfway mark. Start with my kind of C shape, and I'll make sure I'm not going off the edge, but do my best to make the best circle that I can. And of course, it's not gonna be perfect. But I want to get a nice round. Shape like so. So about that large for your circle. I'm going to go around all the way around. You're going to smooth out that shape. And then you can use your uh, your larger brush to fill it in. And I'm just gonna use that same kind of C-shape formation. I'm just gonna bring it all the way around. As you can see, my teal is still a little bit wet in the background. So I do have to give it a couple more minutes to dry before I go on there with a second coat of white to brighten it up because I definitely want to have a nice bright moon. So if you feel like you're getting a lot of teal still peeking through, let this white dry and then go back over it with another coat. Get a nice round moon. Go back in there with my small brush and clean up my circle shape. Kind of drag that brush. I just went back in there and used my small brush to kind of get that outline back. I have a nice clean edge by dragging my small brush. But again, I still have some teal poking through, so I'm gonna let my moon dry for a little bit before I go back and give it another coat of white. So we'll let that dry for a bit. While our moon is drying, we can kind of start thinking about our, um, our sea creature uh, shape down here, our octopus shape down here. Um, our octopus is going to start down here on the bottom left and work its way up. So it's going to work its way up. Um, be sure you're really extending those legs out and you even have two going over the moon. So nice long legs. Um, it does go uh, from thick to thin. So we'll be pushing a little bit harder on our brush for the legs and then getting a little bit, a little bit more soft um, with our uh, push on our brush as we get to the end of um, the legs as well. And we are gonna make it a solid black and then later on go in and add those dots. So I'll let my moon dry for a little bit. I'm gonna wash and dry both of my brushes. I'm going to show you how to start with your sea creature. All right, so go ahead and put your large brush away. We are going to start with our small brush and our black paint only. All right, about halfway up in our water area. So this is water down about halfway up from the bottom. So about right here, I'm going to make a little dot. Little dot. Everyone see that okay? 
make sure you guys see that okay and then all I'm gonna be doing is making little dots and then later on I'll connect them I make the dots so it kind of slows down my hand and my mind and exactly where I want those legs to be so I made that dot halfway um, up from my canvas and then I'm gonna come across a couple more little dots or dashes dip down I'm gonna dip up a little curly cue and then I'm gonna come up so I've made those dashes with my small brush just so that I'm slowly building those legs not going too fast not feeling that I have to make a perfect line the first time around once I'm done making that those dashes coming down closer to the middle and back up into a curly cue then I can go in there with my small brush and connect them. And remember, I'm gonna be pushing a little bit harder on my brush and then I'm just barely at the end. So if you wanna watch and then it'll be your turn. So I'll start at this area, pushing down hard on my brush. It's a little bit thicker where it breaks off. And get thinner and thinner so I kind of made this wave coming down and now I'm going to start kind of being on the tippy toes of my brush I don't want to push too hard barely be on my brush at this point give this a little curly cue I don't think so. Get my brush a little bit wet and dry it out. Pat it on my paper towel. You can go over it to kind of smooth it out a little bit better. Remember, I'm just barely pushing on my brush. I'm just going to flick at the end too. go back in there and just kind of clean it up with nice long smooth lines if your outer edges got a little bit too messy just drag your brush the side of your brush like so perfect so there's that first leg right there and if you are not done with this first leg you are welcome to push pause on the video and then join us for the second one whenever you are ready. All right. I do feel like my moon is a little bit more dry at this point. So I am going to go in there and give it a second coat of white. And I might even want a third coat. Um, so if you feel like your moon is still blending in with that teal too much. Give it a couple of minutes to dry and then go back with your third coat of white. Make sure it looks nice and smooth too. If you have any bumps, go over and smooth it out. But I, what I would do if I was not videoing, I would let this dry for a couple more minutes and then go back with a third coat of white to really brighten it up because it still seems pretty dull to me. So if you are finding your moon is still um, not white, not bright enough, uh, give it a couple more minutes to dry and then um, build your third coat of white on top. And truly you can even do a fourth coat of white on top if you feel like your moon is still um, not uh, a bright white. Once you get your moon nice and bright, give it a couple minutes to dry and then move on to the next leg. All right, but um, for the sake of our video, I'm gonna move on to the next leg. All right, I'm gonna come down a little bit further from this one that I started from. 
and I am going to make more dashes and connect. So I'm going to come down just a little bit, make this dot right here. And then I'm going to come up to a diagonal and then go over the moon. You do want to make sure your moon is nice and dry. So I'm going to come up into a diagonal. I almost touched this one. It's okay if you overlap. Be sure your moon is nice and dry. I'm going to come down a little bit. Mine is probably going to be still a little bit wet, but that is fine. I'm going to come up. I'm going to do a little curly cue. More on the right side. One more. I'm going to come back up. So I've kind of come up with a little bit of a wave here and there. Tiny bit of wave with my dashes. And then I'm going to connect. Same idea. I'm going to be going from thick to thin. So I'm going to push a little bit harder on my brush. And these don't have to connect at this time, but later on we'll go in there and connect them. Pushing less and less on my brush. Again, be sure your moon is nice and dry and you have your moon exactly where you want it before you do this second layer. And then I'm barely pushing on my brush. And coming up here. I'm just gonna have a little bit of a flick at the end. Again, my moon is still wet, but yours should be nice and dry. You've given it another coat to brighten it up as well. And once you're done, you can go in there and have nice long smooth lines, pushing less and less on your brush. That second one. Perfect. There's our second leg. Then we're gonna go in there with our third leg. With our third leg. Our third leg starts a little bit lower and then comes up dips down and comes over our moon as well so let me show you how so i'm going to come up come down a little bit lower from this one just a little bit of a dot and then i'm going to come up with my dashes it's okay if you overlap over the other ones and before i hit that line i am going to dip down a little bit and then come back up and over my line So those are my dashes right here. It's almost like I'm making the letter S. I'm gonna come in, come out, like so. See that letter S in there? And then I'm gonna come up in a little swirl. Come out a little bit too. So I went back where it's in a swirl and then kind of have a little end to it poking. And then once I was done, I could go in there and connect those. That same idea of um, thick to thin. And those are three legs. At any point, if you are like, oh my goodness, I'm so lost, just be sure that you have eight legs on your octopus or your sea creature. And then be sure that your lines are going out and wide. And then I'm going to start pushing less and less on my brush. And again, my moon is still wet. You should be nice and dry. Go back and connect. Okay, 
مسلسل مرد Alright. The fourth leg we're gonna do, and again, if you're not at this point, you're welcome to pause the video and join us whenever you're ready. But the fourth leg is lower down and it's a little bit of a wiggle and coming up all the way to this right corner. So I'm gonna come down just a little bit with my dashes. Just kind of go up and down go above this one right here, up and down, like so. So it's literally just like little wavy movements, up and down. And then I'll go under a connect from thick to thin with my black line. So there is a fourth leg. And if you're not done, you are welcome to push pause on the video. I'm gonna start working on the fifth one, which is pretty easy. All right, the fifth one, you're gonna start a little bit lower than the previous one. And all you're gonna do is come up and then down and then back up. So it's just kind of like a low wave. It's going to be the lowest one. So I just made those dashes dipped almost, uh, almost all the way down. And then I'm going to connect again from thick to thin with my brush. So one, two, three, four, five. The next one's going to be a little bit lower down, um, but you are going to be above this one. So I'm going to be a little bit lower down. I'm going to come up, come up a little bit more. So in this space, I'm going to come up like so, so above the previous one. So up, dip a little bit down and up for those dashes. That's my sixth leg. From thick to thin. One does come off the canvas as well. All right, and then let's work on our seventh one. Our seventh one. Let's see, we have one, two, three. Okay, perfect. All right, with our seventh one, I'm gonna dip my paint. This is my brush and my paint. And I am going to fill in the space a little bit more. 
one, two, three, four, eight. All right, I'm gonna come up between, pretty much I'm gonna fill in this area. I'm gonna start down here. I'm gonna come up, just say I came up right there. Come down. And go over to the left. So come up, come down, and just be sure you're over these two and you're filling up that space a little bit more. And then I will go in there and connect from north to south. Come in just a little bit above this one. A little bit of flick. Here we go. So from large to thin to through and perfect. Gorgeous. I'm going to go back and give me them another coat. You'll, you see some teal and white poking through. And if you're not at the seventh leg, you are welcome to push pause on the video. we do want to kind of fill in this space a little bit more so I am going to come in there maybe after the first second and third start a little dot come up and cross come down and cross back up like so I just wanted to kind of fill in that space so under the first second and third came down back up and across And again, if I lost you with the lines, don't even worry about it. Just be sure it looks nice and full. You have eight legs. Make sure your legs look nice and smooth. So you do want to use the side of your brush to kind of drag it. And make sure the outside of your the legs look nice and smooth. You don't want them to be too bumpy. I'm going to drag my brush. Find those areas that I want to kind of smooth out. And use the side of my brush to kind of clean it up. If you want to smooth out any of your black lines too, you can add water to your brush. Jump on your paper towel about five or six times and go over your black to help it move a little bit better. And then I would let that dry for just a couple minutes and make sure the black isn't that shiny anymore. And then you can go in there and add little tentacles, the little like, um, uh, we're going to add little white dots on top. So I am going to wash and dry my small brush. And then I'm going to use the back of my small brush 
and dip it in the white paint. Again, give yours a couple minutes before you do this, but I want to show you how. And this can, is very random. You're welcome to put it wherever you want. Just be aware of where they cross and be sure you've chosen which one has overlapped on top and which ones are kind of more underneath so you can kind of see that a little bit better as you look closer. Uh, so be sure that you're aware of which ones are above and beneath each other. But again, all I did was dip my uh, small brush, the back of my small brush in white. You should definitely give yours a couple minutes to dry. And then I went in there, mostly on the bottom kind of part. Kind of pushed on those. You can have, you know, a variety of like anywhere from like six to 10 of these dots, but truly you can make it work however it works best for your painting. So um, kind of focus a little bit more on the bottom part of each line work. And you can add as many as you want. Just be sure they each at least have one, one uh, area where they do have dots. So every line at least has one area where there's dots. I like to have a couple sometimes on each one as well. So the back of my brush, kind of using it as, as a stamp, kind of go in there and add some dots. And I'm pushing them about the same pressure each time. So the dots look pretty similar. But it's hard to get them all exactly the same all the time, so don't feel like you have to. Be sure that the black is pretty dry and not shiny before you add these dots. So just as a quick review, we worked on our background from dark to light on the sky and then the water. Then we went in there and created the white line to kind of clean up where they meet. We made our moon. Be sure that you had a nice bright moon in there. We started working on the legs and the dots, which are my favorite part, which is my favorite part. Again, very random. If you're filling up the space right. And once you are done with your dots, you are done with your painting, artist. Great job today. I hope you had so much fun. If you're still working on it or want to kind of use where my dots are, um, you're welcome to pause the video at any point. Just be sure that you have eight legs and you are good to go. And make sure you've filled up that canvas nicely. Oh, one more thing. If you feel like over here on the left side looks kind of messy this is absolutely optional you can go in there and add a little bit of um, black for the legs to meet so you can just kind of go in there a little bit to the left a little bit to the right where the legs meet a little bit to the left to the right so just kind of going in there and making sure you're connecting them you'll see that v shape they kind of before they kind of break off to their own so be sure you're seeing that v-shape as it separates into another leg but otherwise you shouldn't have too many spaces where you would have to fill that in but if you do go in there to the left or the right and make sure you have that v-shape where each one kind of breaks off but otherwise you're all set and uh, once you are done with your dots i hope you had so much fun artists and thank you so much for all of your support and have a beautiful day.